Namaste students, welcome back to the Sisterly's class. In the previous class, I have started with the principles of management. In that principles of management, I have started with the payoffs principles of management. In that payoffs principle, I have already discussed division, division of work, uh, authority and responsibility, discipline, unity of command, unity of direction. Five principles I have already discussed. We we'll have sixth principle: subordinate of uh, subordination of individual interest to the general interest. He tells that there should be a, everyone should everyone will have their own interest, their own goal. That goal they have to put into the general interest and they have to work up. Okay, to the organization. Every uh, individual will have their own goal and they have to bring the, that goal together and they have to work up. So uh, see for. Uh, Individually, that person may have their, his goal might be like uh, getting a good salary might be his goal. Whereas for the organization, getting the good result might be a uh, good uh, goal. Uh, achieving the organization goal might might be his goal. So uh, every individual may have one of the one or the other goal. These goal should bring together and should work together. Both subordinate as well as uh, superior as well as subordinate should work together. Uh, bring them together their uh, interest and they have to achieve an organizational goal. Okay, that is what the subordination of individual interest to the general interest. Next, we have remuneration of the employees. He tells that there should be an equal remuneration should be paid to all the employees. It might be uh, there should not be a discrimination in paying the employees according to the work what they have done should be paid. If it is not paid, they will not get interest towards the work. Uh, but it should, uh, but uh, they should uh, see that it is not beyond the control of the company. But how much ever possible, they have to pay at least a minimum basic payment should be done, so that uh, the workers will be satisfied and they work more, and they will help the organization to achieve their goal. They get a uh, if uh, fair uh, remuneration is paid to the employees, they get a uh, uh, interest towards their work, and they work more with the more interest. See, as I told that, uh, if the work is, if they have done more and more work, more amount should be paid. In that way, if it, if it is encouraged, these uh, the workers, those are working, they will get more encouragement with the salary or the wages. Uh, based on that, they work in the organization. So, remunerations of the employees is also one of the principal. He suggests uh, the payor tells that. Uh, it might be uh, giving good salary or uh, you know maintaining unit of command, unit of direction, authority, response. All this will help if they follow all these principles in the, in, in the organization. He tells that we can achieve an organizational goal. Then we have centralization and decentralization. Uh, the authority power is uh, in the hands of one. Or the, where the decision taking authority is in the hands of the one. In it, then it is called as a centralization. Where the decision power, uh, decision taking authority is more than uh, one. It might be in a few hands, many many people. Then it is called as decentralization. Uh, decentralization is followed in the large organization where many people will be there. One is not enough. One boss will not be enough to, uh, to take a decision and to implement and to take care to see the work is going good or not. So one will not be enough. That is why decentralization is made where few members were, are made as head and uh, others will be followed. So few will have more than one will be having uh, you know, decision power. Then it is uh, decentralization. That is why it is suitable for the large organization. Whereas centralization is uh, suitable for the small organization where uh, they don't have much uh, you know people much uh, you know diversity where they one is enough to take a decision that is why it is called as decentralization so uh, decentralize uh, centralization and decentralization centralization center one person takes a decision then it is called as decentralization if it is a decision taking authority is more than one or few people then it is called as decentralization okay but payoff is not uh, you know uh, telling that there should be a only centralization or there should be only this he tells that both should work together both should be there centralization also should be there decentralization also should be there in order to achieve and rule the next principle which is given by payoff is scalar chains what scalar chain is then uh, if uh, the authority should flow from top level to the bottom level okay the authority the scalar chain is one of the important principle which will be asked for two marks students 
to what is kela chandelas it is nothing but the authority or the rights or the power should flow from top level to the bottom level then it is called as kela chain see for example you have a company like this okay a company where the authority power is in the hands of mr a okay here we have mr a and here we have b c d e and f here g h i j and k see in the organization it will be in this form scalar chain tells that there should be a law of authority from the top level to the lower level a is considered if a is considered as a top level and all the others are the lower level if they want to communicate he is if he is a head or the ceo of the organization if anyone want to communicate say for example i want to communicate want to inform to the h a then he has to go through j k then he has to reach to a he cannot directly go to the a because there is a level in the organization they have to meet they have to cross those level after that only they can stop to this uh, you know top level so they tell that there should there is a authority authority it should follow flow from the top level to the bottom level and not from the bottom level to the top level okay and as i told he cannot directly move into uh, top level and he cannot talk but uh, and he can, if the, if i want to talk to d okay i want to talk to d then also he should move to the j j should ask to k k and should inform to a then b then it should come to c then it should flow to the d it it is a method how it should be followed how this uh, uh, information should go but during the emergency only okay during emergency okay during the emergency case they can also communicate in the same level okay this during the emergency case exceptional case they can communicate from the same level then that is called as gang plank okay this also they will ask the students what is gang plank for two marks they will ask what is gang plank and what is scalar chain i repeat scalar chain is nothing but a flow of authority from the top level to the lower level yet they cannot move directly to the top level because subordinate want to talk to the uh you know superior they cannot directly move they should go in a step by step in this manner then they have to uh, you know talk to the top level in the same way if they uh, if i want to talk to d i want to communicate if we want to tell something with the d about the work or if he has any uh, anything to communicate with the d he has to go through the uh, in the level from the top level in this level only he should go from it is going to authority should flow from the top level to the bottom level so it should go here then it should come to the this level if they want to communicate in the same level they can also communicate but it is allowed only during the emergency if he communicate in the same level if the authority goes flows from in the same level it is possible only during the emergency that is called as gang plank what is gang plank gang plank is uh, present in the scalar chain and you have to write it is during only it is not possible in all the cases only during the emergency it is possible okay next we will move on to the next principle okay till now we have seen certain principles like authority and responsibility unit of command unit of direction and uh, uh, centralization and decentralization or it might be uh, it is all that we have seen it might be centralization or that uh, uh, unity of command unity of direction scale up chain all that we have seen come to 10th principle that is order okay here he tells uh, payor tells that order should be maintained order means it is not ordering it is like order keeping in order all the materials as well as a uh, you know man uh, should be orderly arranged so that they can uh, do the work efficiently and production will increase so uh, they can uh, increase the production and they can reach their goal okay he tells that all should be arranged properly there should not be a wastage of time in the search of the things it should be arranged uh, in a proper places order must be maintained so that there will be a uh, there will be one kind of discipline 
we have to maintain while uh, keeping an order. Okay, there should be a uh, where material should be arranged, the government should be arranged, where uh, people should be uh, made as be seated, there only should be uh, they should sit and work. All that is told in the order. Next, we have equity. Here he tells, uh, here Payal tells that there should be an equality among all. There should not be any discrimination based on their sex, based on their religion, based on their uh, you know language. There should not be any differentiation. There should be everyone are treated equally, and uh, everyone should be given every opportunities. There should be uh, it might be subordinate or superior, whoever it is. All are treated equally. They should uh, also they should also listen to the sub uh, sub uh, subordinate and subordinate also should uh, listen to the superior. This uh, equality is important uh, to have a harmony uh, or the, to have a uh, you know peace uh, peaceful uh, working condition. So uh, uh, equality equity is very important. Uh, so as a manager, he it is his responsibility to keep everyone equally without any discrimination. That is about equality, equity. Next we have uh, stability of personnel. See, there is a ch uh, uh, chances of uh, uh, going out of the workers. See, once if we appoint, he payon tells that once if we comes to the business, make him to stay for at least for minimum period of time. If uh, see, for example, after joining, if we Again and again, if people are coming and going from the business, what will happen? It takes a lot of energy. Like we have to train them, we have to, he should adjust to the organization, or we have to, you know, make him understand how he has to work. It is a waste of time. So, Payon tells that the stability of tenure make a stay of people, the tenure period, at least for a minimum period, minimum period of time, make that person to stay and understand and get the him so that it will be working smoothly otherwise if a people keeps on leaving the job or keeps on adding it it takes a time to train them and to make them understand what are the rules and regulations and also there will be a chances of uh, low production because they will not be knowing what they have to work when the new partner is when a new person is appointed to the organization he will not be knowing what work he has to do by the time he understands the work and he adjusts to the work and in this, uh, by the time the production uh, by with that time the production may go down so he tells that spent, uh, sorry uh, stability of personal details that stable, stable they should stay for a, at least a minimum period. When a, a person is appointed, give him a proper training and give him a so much facility so that he will be happy and he will be there for a long time. And also when uh, those uh, things will be there uh, smoothly, there will be a production will go smoothly and uh, final results can be achieved uh, very easily. Then coming to initiative. See, initiative means giving the uh, responsibility even for the others, uh, showing uh, based on their you know, skills and knowledge, work should be given, allotted and given initiative to, to uh, take uh, their own decision and to uh, with their, you know, available knowledge and the knowledge of what they have based on that help them to take the proper decision. So, initiative means giving the leadership. Give them leadership. Not only you have to make a decision, you should also obey them. You should also ask them certain decisions, all that, so that they get the uh, leadership power among them and make the, uh, uh, the organization uh, better productivity. He can achieve, uh, he can give a good suggestion and he can also help to achieve an organizational goal. Last one is Esperate the Corps. Esperate the Corps is nothing but unity is a strength. Uh, finally, all should work together. If uh, if any one discrimination, one misunderstanding between any either the subordinate or superior, this work may go wrong. So, if we have to achieve an organizational goal without any problem, all should work together uh, like a uh, like a family they have to work and they can achieve so they tell that unity is of strength so finally after having followed all the principle if there is no unity among all uh, among them there cannot be achieved an organizational goal so uh, the payor tells that esperate the cops uh, this is a uh, uh, esperate the cops is nothing but unity finally they should be instruct working as a I. we will let us work uh, as a we 
we instead of working me alone let work let us work as a uh, as a cooperation and we let us achieve an organizational goal that is what he tells in the principle 14 so i repeat what are the uh, till now we have uh, we have studied what are the principles we have studied division of work you, division of work authority and responsibility discipline unity of unity of command unity of direction and so on centralization and decentralization uh, then we have in, uh, order equity sub uh, subordination uh, subordination of individual interest to the group interest then we have hierarchy then uh, stability of personal initiative uh, aspect the crops and remuneration of our employees these are the coding principle given by Hen uh, henry peol which is very very important which can be expected for five marks practical question also students for the five marks practical question you just have to mention their principles uh, and uh, it can be expected for two marks or eight marks uh, uh, eight marks or four marks usually they will ask from this uh, meaning of uh, a uh, scalar chain, unity of command, uh, unity of command, meaning of scalar chain, differences between unity of command and unity of direction, and they may ask a Gantt plan. So these are things what we have studied. Next we will see the differences between a uh, Henry Taylor's principle and a W Taylor's principle. And the last topic of this chapter is differences between Taylor's principle and F. W. Taylor principle. Uh, just now we have discussed what is uh, uh, what in what in all Taylor principle has suggested, what in all Taylor principle has suggested. We have also studied. So we will see the differences. First difference is see here. Taylor uh, is concentrating on the overall administrative, overall administrative of the overall improvement of the organization. But uh, here yeah, the Taylor is concentrating on the productivity. For uh, for him, main aim is to increase the productivity. He, uh, you know, where he, it is telling about the increasing the production, productivity, whereas here uh, the Fayol's principle is telling overall improvement. That is why here he has given protein principle, it tells overall of the organization, overall ability, overall improvement of the organization. Uh, initially, Fayol is a practitioner, whereas uh, our retailer is a scientist. That is why he has given the sign, he has done the uh, uh, every uh, observation experiment he tells that uh, management is based on science everything he tells all the suggestion he gives such uh, scientifically he tells that scientifically is, uh, that is why fw taylor's main principle is sci uh, scientific management whereas he uh, payall his main principle is general theory of administration so they will ask uh, who is the father of scientific management who is the father of general administration administration you need to know students general administration fw taylor whereas henry uh, taylor is a scientific management uh, say, uh, taylor it, here uh, as i told fails uh, before only in the introduction part only i have told everything it is not created it is observed it is done experiment based on that uh, the, the uh, principle has emerged the same way uh, Pierre's principle is formed with the personal experiences of that he was also working in one of the institution there he worked and he got uh, you know he, he got experience personal experiences he has put in the form of the uh, principle that is why he tells that it should be arranged orderly it should be kept uh, all should be treated equally pay, payment should be done uh, you know equally so that there should not be disturbed because he has experienced with this his personal experience he is telling you know uh, his different uh, his uh, principle whereas here it is based on the observ observation and experiment because he has given he is a scientist and he has given the uh, he tells that everything is a science everything should be done scientifically all the management work should be done scientifically and his main aim is to increase the production so production can be increased according to him by doing scientifically research so his based uh, observation uh, his uh, principle came based on his observation and his uh, experiment he has done certain experiment based on that he has given this principle next we have the uh, 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 principle Fayol's principle he is concentrated on the uh, from the perspective of the he will see from the perspective of the top level management he is concentrated on overall whereas here he uh, Fayol is seeing the, from the perspective of the level, uh, lower level management so these uh, principles 
this is a, uh, a differences between a Payal's principle and a Primitivera principle. This can be expected for four marks students. So with this, uh, the topic uh, I have almost covered almost all the topics. But uh, now I will just uh, recall what and all we have studied from this chapter. It is uh, uh, we have studied the meaning, characteristics, significance. After that, I went uh, for uh, Taylor F W Taylor's principle. In F W Taylor's principle, he has given certain principle, his introduction, and he has given certain principles. After that, we have studied the techniques uh, like a uh, method study, motion study, time study, practice study, all that we have done. After that, we have studied a uh, P-space system, a uh, differential P-space system, P-space uh, wages should be uh, given everyone equally, everyone should be treated equally, uh, there should not be discrimination in the giving the wages all that we have studied and uh, what is mental regulation, very important for two marks and then we have uh, uh, we, uh, we have studied about the uh, Payol's principle. Payol uh, tells that uh, there should be followed, 14 principles should be followed, and his uh, administrator, general administrator, uh, father, all that we have studied. And his principles is very, you know, simple, but it is 14 principles he has given, but very simple principles he has given. Then we have also studied the differences between the Payol's principle and the W. Taylor principle. But from this chapter, you can expect a practical oriented questions students. For 5 marks practical oriented, from this you can expect Fayol's 14 principles can be expected for 14 marks. Uh, uh, yeah, for, uh, for 5 marks you can expect uh, this 14 principle. You have to write uh, for this 14 principle, you have to write just a side point. If it is asked for the practical oriented, if it is asked for any other section, you have to write only. Okay, with this I have finished this chapter. Thank you students.